On a normal takeoff, when the winds are either calm or straight down the runway, the ailerons will stay in the neutral position while you steer with the rudder, steer with your feet down the runway, and as the airplane accelerates, you rotate and climb out, but the ailerons will remain in a neutral position. But, for example, if the winds were off the right front or the left front, in our example, the wind is blowing from your right front because it's blowing the windsock open, it would be necessary to position your controls to prevent any side loading of the aircraft or the aircraft drif drifting off the runway. The proper technique would be to apply full aileron correction into the wind, just as if you're taxiing. But as you apply full throttle and the aircraft begins to accelerate, the wind flowing over your control surfaces becomes more, causes your uh, aircraft controls to become more effective. So even though we started with full aileron control input, it may be necessary to reduce some of the aileron input as you continue down the runway. You'll know what is the right amount because if you continue to hold too much right aileron, the aircraft will attempt to drift to the right or side load to the right. If you did not apply enough ailerons into the wind, the airplane will feel like it is side loading or starting to drift off the left. So you will begin your takeoff roll by full aileron correction, apply full throttle, steer with your feet with your rudders, start to accelerate, and start to reduce some of the aileron input as you go down the runway. Depending on how strong the wind is will depend on how much aileron input you need. How the aircraft will actually leave the ground would be you would still rotate so the nose will come up first. And then, because you have the ailerons into the wind, your left wheel would come off second. And then finally, when the airplane is completely ready to fly, the right wheel will come up. So in essence, the airplane will go nose wheel, left wheel, right wheel. Once the aircraft is airborne, you may now put the ailerons back neutral into the wind or back neutral. The way that your vertical stabilizer and rudder sticks up, it tends, the airplane tends to want a weather vane into the wind, and that's a good thing, because once we're airborne and your ailerons are neutral, if you allow the aircraft to weather vane just slightly into the wind, it allows the airplane to crab across the ground to maintain our center line while we're climbing out on our departure leg. You still need proper right rudder as you pitch up to compensate for the P factor, but what we've done is just allow the yaw force to create a better heading instead of the runway heading. We've now created a heading that allows the airplane to safely crab across the ground while we climb out. Let's look what happens at a left crosswind. If the winds were coming from your front left, you would position the ailerons completely to the left to correct for the wind to prevent side loading or drift. As the airplane accelerates, the wind across your controls causes your controls to become more and more effective. So therefore, you would start reducing the amount of aileron input that you had originally applied. As the airplane accelerates, you still rotate at your rotate speed. The right wheel would come off the ground first, and then the left wheel. Once the airplane is airborne, you would level your wings, and you can allow the airplane to crab into the oncoming wind to maintain your centerline track. One thing to note, though, is remember on our takeoff, our left turning tendencies are strong because we have the torque effect, and then at the pitch point, we have the P factor, and we also have spiraling slipstream. So on a normal takeoff, the plane tends to want to yaw to the left anyways. If you have left crosswind, because of the weather vaning tendency, the airplane additionally wants to yaw to the left. So you may notice that a left, wind, uh, left crosswind takeoff requires a lot more right rudder 